Language lesson the heart, 8.2, breathing release. So you're going to be a teacher of uh, language lesson of the heart. And what do you do? Uh, you know, you talk about, you know, what's going on in your intentionality and you talk about the empowerment process. I'm empowering myself with a strong and loving intent to heal my will. I want to live. I want to be fulfilled. <coughs> but, um, and so, you know, you explain the need for doing emotional release work, but how do you actually get a room full of people to do it? And uh, I showed you in uh, 8.1 that, you know, there's ways of doing it around the world. There's a... Uh, you know, chaotic meditation, there's dancing, and there's, uh, you know, a hooting, and and then there's the haka, and there's there's a lot of things you can do standing up. Uh, but to get somebody to ignite, uh, this is what you want to do, is you want to have them ignited, connected to their body, and connected to their breath, and connected to their heart, and let that emotion be released. And that's, that's where breath work comes in. in uh, you know, they call it breath work, but in emotional release work and in primal scream work, it, it's called uh, mat work. In other words, you let people lay on mats like a yoga mat. There's a lot of different kinds of it. It's got a really, really long history. It goes back to Qigong and uh, in China and Tai Chi. Tai Chi is basically breath work. Pranayama in India. But there's different kinds of breath work. It's like, but this breath work is connected breathing. And uh, in yoga, yoga has breath work in it. Um, when you talk about Hatha yoga, a lot of people are all focused in on, uh, you know, the positions that you're in, which is pretty good work. But the real, the real transformation happens in yoga uh, with the breath work. The whole point, the whole point of doing yoga is to put breath your consciousness and breath into every part of your body and uh, and then a lot of stuff happens. And there's a lot of different names for this breath work. Um, holotropic breath work, shamanic breath work because it is shamanic because you're starting to feel energies that you're how you connect to energies is through your emotions and through your breath and you can get those subtle energies vibe amped up and you can start feeling things that are very shamanic. And there's healing breath work. There's people who just do breath work and they concentrate on diseases and concentrate on releasing uh, blocks in, in people and, and, uh, and bringing a healing environment to the inside of them. Very good, very good. There's immortality breath work. Uh, I think Leonard Orr is working on that right now because there's, there's a history of doing deep breath work and immortality. The, the only people who have ever claimed immortality have been Indians, India, some Indian yogis, who've actually done breath work, filled their whole body full of life force, and they theoretically are immortality. Then there's rebirthing breath work. A lot of people have been doing that. That was very popular in the, in the 80s and the 90s, and I guess into the 2000s. But, um, that's very powerful because it can, it, it can, part of the, the history of it is, is, uh, is the people who started doing it went back to the birth canal and they, they relived their birth traumas. And this is what you want. You want to be able to, to be conscious as an adult and go back through time, through your breath and vibrate to the sort of the most traumatic thing that happened to you, the most uh, powerful transformation. So you went from the mother's womb into this world, that, that's a transformation. And you want to transform, you want to continue that transformation into a fully, fully uh, conscious being. It is very much a birth. So this is called um, rebirthing and rebirthing breath work. Very, very powerful stuff. And so I don't know if you noticed, but all of this applies to language lessons of the heart because you can access different parts, different memories, and actually feel them and let your mind be the observer and you feel them and then you can put words to them and, and, you, and, you, and you can connect to the parts of you that hasn't vibrated right in a long time. It's also called full wave breathing. Full wave breathing means to breathe without stopping. 
No stop. No. So you can stop at the bottom, stop at the top. But this is called connected breathing. Almost all of these breathings have that same connected. You can do it through the nose, you can do it through the mouth. If you could breathe through your ears, you could do it through your ears too. But you, you, it's, it's that connection. So there is no, uh, no stoppage, no pause. And then what happens is your energy body fills up, your, your emotional body becomes awakened, and your body starts to move, and all kinds of things happen. You go into an alternate state of consciousness, and from there it's very easy to induce emotional release. And this is what you want to do in a workshop setting. In order to do it in a workshop setting, as a teacher, you have to do it yourself. So and there's plenty of places out there uh, in the world where you can learn this stuff. Uh, transformational breath. You can look that up on the internet. I have a link to it. They have a complete healing system, and uh, they're like gung ho, and they got like 50,000 people who've already done their, their training and are doing uh, for trauma and for natural healing and uh, all kind of stuff, right? Because you're talking about life force. You're increasing your life force. You're increasing your life force. You're increasing that vibration. And, and what is not life or life giving or life enhancing what's going to want to bubble up. So it's very powerful for doing that. And there's a transformational breath people probably almost in every state. Probably wherever you are there's probably somebody within a, a you know, four or six hour drive if they're not in your hometown. Same thing with rebirthers. You have to look up rebirthers because rebirthers have been around for so long. There's rebirthers all over the place. You just have to look them up and learn how to do it. Um, this this uh, first video I'm going to put up. I'm, so I'm just going to give you a selection and maybe make a few little comments on the videos. This first video is is uh, on um, on. Uh, where did the idea of source breath, source breath, that's another name, source, your life force is your source. Where did the idea of source breath come from? Yeah. So the idea of source breath breaking, where did that then come from? Well, the, the name and the form of it is from this lady, Benny Dansby, as I mentioned, my trainer. Um, you could say it was invented or discovered by uh, another American in the 60s called Leonard Orr. Um, I think breath has been used for centuries in, in yoga, but they tend to breathe down here, whereas this uh, emotional releasing breathing is up here. We, it's about opening the heart, you could say, so we breathe into the heart area to release these heart-blocking feelings. Um, I don't know how Leonard Orr first discovered it. It could have been like a spontaneous rebirth like I had in the cinema. I suddenly noticed I was doing this very deep breathing up here and connected. That means there's no pause between the in and the out breath. It's just like <sighs> taking more oxygen than we need to, to live. Um, spiritual people would say we're also taking a lot of more prana. This is spiritual energy as well. What do you think caused that reaction in the cinema where you started breathing that way? Do you think your body made you do it or like the no, soul? No, I can see it was my mind. It was that moment where I saw this reunion between mother and son, or sons in their case. But for me, it was the reunion in my mind between my mother and me. And that's why I was able at least a small step to go and phone her up and start start the reunion. Truth is, she's, she had always loved me. Um, it was me that shut down because of other experiences in my early childhood, and particularly at birth. Um, and she could never understand why I was so distant from her. She always wanted to be with me and always loved me, but I was the one that pulled away for my own reasons. Yeah. So you think it's it's a natural way to start breathing if your mind wants you to let go of something that is in your body. Or it needs a trigger, um, and you could say I was ripe 
because I was doing the fasting, it, it was probably, I'm guessing that it was much easier for me to get in touch with this enormous emotion. I had kept it very, very locked, and many, many people do different, at different uh, levels. Um, and so what has been found is when you deliberately breathe like that, and you feel safe, if you feel safe with your rebirther, as we call it, I'm a rebirther, um, my job really as a rebirther is to provide safety and support first and to keep the person breathing because um, people will resist getting in touch see, we, we've kept our emotions hidden for a very real reason and uh, because we were afraid when we shut down so it takes a lot of safety to allow this emotion to come up for us to look at again and to re-experience so my job is, is to provide safety and support and help the person to breathe and maybe speak a little um, about their process if they most need to hear it's safe to express your feelings or you are wanted or you are loved whatever has come out of a conversa previous conversation that we've had I will say sentences to help them unlock the door in their mind so that the release can come the breath is the main tool um, but the mind has to be involved as well because it's the mind that shut it down in the first place the breath is the main tool um, but the mind has to be involved as well because it's the mind that shut it down in the first place So uh, you can see from Douglas Crawford that, that uh, he, he got into this work spontaneously sitting in a movie and saw himself breathing and had this little vision of connecting with his mother and so uh, it can be done just with breath work. You can do emotional healing just with breath work. But in a workshop setting like Language of Lessons of the Heart what I would have is have all the people shake, move their jaw, wiggle a little bit, you know, as, and then say, say uh, the empowerment. I'm empowering myself with a strong, loving intent to heal my will. And say, do that for like maybe five or ten minutes before they go down to the ground. So that the intention to, to uh, you know, put love and, and, and healing into their emotional body down here. That's what you've already told, taught them that. So when, when they're going to go do their uh, breath work, they already, they're already have this thing. You've already talked about emotional release work, and you've already gone over doing the denial and judgment releases. So that when they're done, and they come up out of it, and that, that little time with the... Uh, when they're just quiet, let everybody be quiet, and let them find and reorganize and, and re, uh, resettle. Their quiet time is really important at the end of it. So that they can find their judgment and denial. Some people will be fired up and they want to, you know, keep going, but give people a time to do their judgment and denial releases. Don't just take them out of it. So this next uh, little clip is going to show you how easy it is. It's ridiculously easy. It's 20... Uh, 20 connected breaths and uh, she's doing it standing up you can do it stand up and stand down when you when you hear her she talks about doing this is just 20 connected breaths but when you're doing it yourself to learn how to do it and to help you get into uh, moving your emotions you know this can be done for a half hour an hour two hours three hours whatever it takes because it just keeps going and going uh, and then you can do it day after day. I know, I know uh, one lady, I, I saw one lady a video, she's been doing it every day for years, and she's like not here anymore. She uh, has so much power and so much integrity, it's, uh, it's uh, amazing, really, if you, if you know what that's all about. So you can't, you can't vibrate and breathe in source energy and not be changed. It's, a, it's impossible.
I'm going to invite you now to do 20 connected breaths with me. This is conscious breathing and this is what I've learned from the rebirthing process which is actually just breathing in universal energy yeah it's rather than breathing in the breath it's the energy flow that we're receiving and it's connected which means that the in breath is connected to the out breath the best way that I can describe it is if you had a box of tissues and you were pulling a tissue out that's the in breath and then you just drop the tissue that's the out breath so the out breath is breathed out when gravity just naturally takes it let me give you an example going to do it through the nose today when you do the conscious breathing through the mouth, it brings up more of those um, suppressed emotions and I'd recommend doing that if you're doing a longer breathwork session and, um, you know, lay down on your own half an hour, one hour, maybe it's one and a half hours or two hours with a breathwork practitioner. But for today, just the 20 breaths, okay? Um, so... I'm going to do it through the nose. I suggest you do the same. I like to close my eyes, do what feels good to you, okay? Um, so, similar to this, see what feels good to you. Okay, so of the 20 breaths, on each fifth one, it's a big inhale. A big inhale, and obviously the exhales just then let go, so it's connected. Remember the word connected. So... I invite you to close your eyes and um, I'll count you through the first five and then we'll continue. Okay, so take a nice deep breath to start with. What I actually suggest you do is, look at me for a moment, I said shut your eyes, but open your eyes and, and do this with your jaw and click it because we can hold a lot of tension around our jaw and when I do that, my ears are freed up so you might feel the same and just let your shoulders drop, let your body flop and relax, okay? and get comfortable. So we're going to start with the one in, two in, three in, four in, and then the big one, and keep going. Feels good. Now, that was actually the second video I made. Um, there was a bit more explanation in the first one, but I accidentally deleted it while I was uploading it. So I'm sure I'll have more to share on um, the um, breath work and rebirthing. And it's been great to do it here with you today. So I send you loads of love. Have a beautiful day. Bye. Mwah. <laughs>
This is for them doing it inside themselves, by themselves. And uh, that, that whole, because it's a distraction, you know, you're trying to get into your pain. If somebody is touching you and comforting you and petting you and giving you that, oh, they're there, that's okay. That's not what you want. You want to go into the pain uh, fearlessly if you can. So to have the idea of having two people or three people around every single person, that's not, you're not going to be able to do that. It's just going to be you and maybe a, a helper giving the workshop. So, and the other thing is you're not going to do breath work for uh, an hour, two hours, 30 minutes tops. And uh, because what happens is because you've already set it up for them to do uh, emotional release work, which is crying and moaning and shouting and whatever that is, there are going to be people primed to do that. Some people are sitting on a load of emotions and they need to express right away. So having people doing breast work within 10 or 15 minutes, 10 minutes tops, you're going to have people start screaming and moaning. And once that ignition happens in one person, then a lot of people are going to start screaming. So the whole breath work is just to get into, just to get uh, that ignition happening in people. And for the people who are who are uh, struggling a hard time, they need to continue to do their breath work for the whole session. If they, if they can't get to any emo emotions, then let them just breathe, content, uh, connected breathing, and let them hear other people's mo emotions. Just hearing other people's emotions while they're doing their breath work is very powerful for them. So uh, don't touch anybody. Don't, uh, you know, they're there, or, you know, try to poo-poo anything like that, or, or go all that, uh, you know, Mother Mary stuff, or, you know, just let people have their space. It's a sacred space, and it's just meant to be from skin in, without any interference. Because at the end of the workshop, they're going to have to go home and do it themselves with nobody around. So that's, but what's nice about this clip is to give you an idea of what it's going to look like. When people do emotion release work, it, what it looks like. Their bodies move, they, they make sounds, lots and lots of sounds. Not every... A hotel or venue that you're going to be in is going to want that because you're in a conference room or something and there you you know you paid for this conference room and all of a sudden everybody's screaming and yelling while uh, the rest of the people are walking around the hotel got to be really clear about that in advance because uh, they don't like it and you're going to be doing this two or three times a day you know, once in, once after you get them to get them going and later on in the afternoon so if you're doing it three days, that's three times, that's like six times or between, uh, what, six or more times of people uh, doing really heavy duty emotion release work. So check your venues, make sure that you can do it uh, yeah, for like 20 or 30 people. That's a lot of noise. But anyway, this is really good. To, sh to show you the, the what breath work does, Hol he's, his, uh, his, uh, he's calling it holotropic breath work, which is this uh, Stanislav Grof and uh, and in uh, that whole tradition. Holotrope Atmen ist von Christina und Stanislav Groff entwickelt worden. Es ist eine Form von tiefer experimenteller Selbsterfahrung, wo durch vertieften, schnellen Atem das spontane Heilpotenzial der menschlichen Psyche aktiviert wird. Ja, es ist einfach ein Werkzeug, was man nutzen kann, um seine eigene Entwicklung zu unterstützen. Es können sehr starke Spannungen auftreten und deshalb sollte man diese Arbeit, das Holotrope Atmen, auch mit jemandem machen, der da drin gut ausgebildet ist. Es haben sich ziemlich schnell Spannungen aufgebaut im Bereich Nacken, Schultern. Und es ging dann in so eine Empfindung rein, wie wirklich so festzustecken im Geburtskanal. Damals hatte ich noch Asthma und jetzt aus der Rücksicht, also kann ich sagen, dass ich 
das Asthma gebraucht habe, um unbewusst das hochzubringen. Das Asthma habe ich jetzt nicht mehr. Wir benutzen also auf diese Art und Weise diesen Atem wie ein inneres Radar, um die individuell latent vorhandene Muskelspannung anzuregen. Verbunden mit dieser Muskelpanzerung, die dadurch auftritt, taucht auch die Emotion auf, die vielleicht zu dieser Panzerung geführt hat. Und beides kommt über einen Punkt, wo es sich lösen kann. Naja, und ähm, heute in der Erfahrung ähm, habe ich halt einfach ein Stück weit mehr so dieses Missbrauchsthema bearbeitet und ähm, auch losgelassen. Die Rolle des Beisitzers ist in erster Linie dabei zu sitzen und einen sicheren Rahmen zu gewährleisten. Er wird also vielleicht Taschentücher geben, Kissen unterlegen, vielleicht den Weg zur Toilette begleiten oder zusammen mit dem Gruppenleiter Körperarbeit machen, die auch ganz genau abgesprochen ist. Nach der Erfahrung als Atmender malen dann die Erfahrenen ein Mandala und man löst sich auf diese Art und Weise auch von der Erfahrung, man distanziert sich von dem Erlebten. Man kann dann von seiner Erfahrung erzählen, sich lossagen, sich vielleicht rituell lossprechen. Und das, was du jetzt so beschrieben hast, das berührt mich ganz sehr, weil ich vieles von dem also einfach ganz intensiv nachfühlen kann. Ne? Und dann war ich so ein, so ein Anführer von irgendeiner Mannschaft und habe irgendwelche in, in so einer in anderen Sprache geredet oder was auch immer das so war und habe wollte denen erklären, nach was die suchen müssen. Ich habe dann so, na, so eine Kali-Energie, halt übelste Fleischeslust und einfach Lust auf Ekstase, Lust zu tanzen, so all das, was ich mir echt verkneif oder unterdrück. So, ne? In den Zeiten, wo ich dann abgetriftet bin, habe ich mich auch manchmal ganz der Musik hingegeben und das war halt total Wonne und Ekstase. Ich bin durch Galaxien und Welten begleitet, geschwungen, Farben gesehen, Kreisel, Symbole und habe mich richtig frei und leicht gefühlt. Dazwischen hatte ich aber auch ähm, Phasen in einer absoluten Stille und da war gar nichts mehr. Also da war überhaupt nichts mehr. Mit Katrin war das am Ende einfach super. Also Katrin, das habe ich die ganze Zeit gemerkt, hat sich total fürsorglich um mich gekümmert. Aber ein schönes Erlebnis. Uh, I love this clip, that clip. Uh, there's this one line that the lady, she's doing this, and she says, I surfed through galaxies and worlds. I swung and saw colors. You know, circles and symbols, and I felt really free and easy. That's just from doing, that's just from doing uh, breath work. When you do breath work, Emotional healing work, judgment and denial work, when you do it all together, things change. You open up, you get reintegrated, you get solid, authentic, real. None of this stuff happens in the mind, it all happens in the body. And for all the people who uh, are looking at this and they're not really sure about whether they want to be a, a teacher or not, and they don't really know how to do emotional release work, just do the breath work. And, uh, and if you've got the judgment and denial part down really good, practice that, then do the breath work, and then your emotions will come up, and then your judgments and denials, what was forcing all those feelings to be held in denial for so long, or to be unexpressed for so long, you can do it yourself. Just lay on your bed, lay on the floor, do your connected breathing, do, you know, and then that's a pretty simple way of doing it. It's not that it doesn't have to be super noisy. Although that's where the good part is because you know, not only do you rage against the mom and dad stuff, but you rage against the world, rage against the boyfriend girlfriend stuff. That stuff needs to be loud. Correcting the 
problems of the world that are inside of you. <laughs> uh, this next clip is um, transformation, transformational breath, and they're probably one of the best uh, well-known, established kind of groups. Transformational breath by this lady uh, Judith Kravitz. And they've, they've had some pretty, I don't really know what their whole thing is, I, I, it's still connected breathing. But they have like a, some more spin on it or they go deeper or something. And I think they, they have a teacher's class and teacher's training class and all that kind of stuff. But I'm putting that out there because they're so well known, you can find them in almost every state. And, uh, and they've got a pretty good uh, little PR thing going going. Uh, you know, we talk about people who've had breakdowns and recovered, and people who've recovered from cancer, and you know that, that's pretty strong testimony. And but but you know when when a mo when cancer or or, or arthritis or or uh, you know bad livers, bad kidneys, when these things have an emotional cause to them, then when you do the emotional work, it relieves it relieves that that blockage because you're dealing with core energy, the energy of life force. When it's blocked, it's blocked, and it doesn't go to the places it needs to go. And healing can happen as soon as that vibration goes up. Healing happens, and they're taking advantage of it and, and uh, doing it to the, in the best possible way. So that's why I'm putting their clip on there. There's one other clip that I'm going to show at the end, which is uh, which is uh, I don't even think I'm going to introduce it, but it's a. Uh, um, it's this doctor. Doctor who, um, let's see, yeah, the brain benefits of holotropic breath work and transformational breathing rebirth therapy. This lady is a doctor and she's talking about the medical side of it and how, how it works. I'm going to put that at the end. So, uh, Just remember it is about the heart. You breathe through your heart. You breathe through your heart and the motions come back up through the heart. This is heart-centered work. And uh, the reason why I say do it by yourself is so that you can have compassion for yourself and you're doing it for yourself. You don't need a therapist. You don't need a counselor to do this work. Just to breathe. That's all you're doing is breathing. But you're breathing in a conscious manner and you're keeping your mind out of the equation. That's what you want. Transformational breath is a very powerful self-healing modality. Self-healing because the person doing the breathing creates the energy that creates the healing and transformation. It's powerful because we're working with the life force. We're working with the breath on all three levels of our being, our physical, our mental, emotional, and our spiritual. So it's very inclusive and it's very effective. My name is Stuart Wills. I'm working as a pulmonologist for 25 years. Hi, I'm Ralph, out of Germany. I had a nervous breakdown three years ago. Since 12 years, I have leukemia and skin cancer. I came in contact with TB and it blew my mind. It's really brought back my life to me. It made me peaceful inside. It made me feel more joy. I have so much power and I found the love to my body, integrated my body, my mind, my spirit. I felt satisfied working as a pulmonologist to quit my job and uh, just now. I start uh, becoming a coach and trainer for TB. But basically that's what transformational breath is, is utilizing our breath to create powerful internal, external transformation in our lives. I'm Dr. Danny, and today I'm going to tell you about the brain benefits of holotropic breath work, transformational breathing, and rebirthing therapy. Breath 
to work and something called pranayama or yogic control over that breath is a key part of the system of yoga created thousands of years ago. But even if you don't do yoga, breath work or pranayama just by itself is one of the most practical and quickest ways to tap into parts of your brain's nervous system that are normally out of your control, which means not under your conscious control. And as it turns out, it's just not fluffy hippie stuff. There's tons of research for proof of how breath work and pranayama, which are two separate things, they can both bust stress, aid in the recovery from buried trauma, help recover from chronic anxiety and panic attacks, and so much more. So even if you don't have any of these clinical issues, it's also one of my favorite ways to hit the reset button and re-energize after a stressful day and week and to release the tension that you don't even know that you're holding on to until it's gone. So there's lots of different forms of breathwork and pranayama, and I'm just going to talk about a few now. There's a researcher called Dr. Alan Hobson, and he's a psychiatrist at Harvard University. He's a leading brain researcher, and he actually sums up why breathwork is so powerful in a single sentence. It is the one physical thing in our bodies that we can access easily, which links what he refers to as the bottom-up processes in the brain, or the autonomic processes and those processes in the brain that are under the voluntary control called the top-down processes. The breath is the link between the bottom up and the top down, the unconscious and the conscious processes of the brain. So various styles of breath work span an entire spectrum of uses and effects on the nervous system. At one end of the spectrum, you have yoga breathing styles or pranayamas to relieve stress and induce calm, like the healing breath. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have specific breathing practices that are very stimulating. They're more under the breathwork category, and they produce a catharsis or intense emotional release. This is something called holotropic breathwork, also known as rebirthing therapy and transformational breathing. And this is what I'm going to focus on for the rest of this video. Holotropic breathwork also uses music as a catalyst to access deep emotions and deep unconscious thoughts, feelings, and states, and release tension along with deep circular breathing. Circular breathing means you don't take a, a pause at the end of the exhale, you inhale right away. And this was a practice that was coined and studied by Dr. Stanislav Grof in the 1960s, and he used it as a powerful therapeutic tool. So a question about this type of circular breathing or holotropic breath work that I get from my doctor colleagues is that, you know, can this form of circular breathing induce something called hyperventilation syndrome and can it be dangerous? Hyperventilation syndrome is where the carbon dioxide levels decrease in your blood and in your brain and it can cause constriction or narrowing of the blood vessels in the brain and the heart in very rare extreme cases. In milder forms of hyperventilation, you can get feelings of dizziness, agitation or unease, strong emotions, tingling in your hands and your feet, and some muscle spasms, which are harmless in most people. If you do have severe asthma or any heart issues, then you should always do breath work under the coaching of a qualified practitioner and after you know checking with your doctor. But the good news is that there's no reported cases, zero reported cases in the literature, in the research of heart attacks, strokes, or other serious ill effects from breath work. So it appears to be quite safe in general for most healthy people. One theory about the difference between circular or holotropic breath work and hyperventilation syndrome in the extreme medical sense of the term, where you know very low levels of carbon dioxide in the brain and the blood lead to decreased driving to breathe in again, is that the technique of circular breathing, because you inhale right at the end of the exhale without waiting for the carbon dioxide levels to rise first, you avoid some of the negative effects of clinical, like severe, hyperventilation syndrome. Another theory about the differences is that clinical hyperventilation syndrome, you get a lot of sympathetic nervous system activation or fight or flight overdrive versus you get a lot less of this fight or flight reaction in breath work when it's done properly with a qualified coach. Based on some preliminary research, both hyperventilation syndrome and breath work may actually activate similar regions of the brain and you know, result in this mild decrease in carbon dioxide and mild increase in oxygen. And this is thought to actually activate parts of this parasympathetic nervous system and it activate parasympathetic dominance to reach altered states without ingesting any drugs or any substances, which is pretty cool stuff. Studies have also now shown that holotropic breath work actually improves something called HRV, or heart rate variability, and state anxiety level. Both of these things, heart rate variability and anxiety level, are known to significantly decrease the chance of ever having a heart attack or a stroke. So holotropic breath work seems to be quite good for you in general. 
So getting back to substance-induced trances, so Dr. Stanislav Lagroff, who I mentioned earlier, he's one of the modern pioneers of breathwork, and he actually started to experiment with breathwork after working with LSD, or acid as it's known, after it became illegal to do that research in the 1960s. He actually started off using LSD in his research to help people to process trauma and to help the brain integrate painful or really emotional memories, and also to gain access to intuitive states and creativity in this altered state of consciousness that uh, the LSD would produce. So what he found was that he could actually help people reach the similar state of LSD without any drugs using specific forms of breathwork. And that's what he used. He used holotropic breathwork to do this. In fact, if I look at a brain EEG of someone who was doing holotropic breathwork, the delta and the theta patterns, meaning the slow brain waves, are similar to an altered shamanic state of consciousness. In other words, the trance-like state where slow waves dominate the brain patterns show up when you do holotropic breathing. And one study also found that when someone was in a breathwork-induced trance state and they had an emotional experience or flashback or they were accessing some past emotional memories or working through strong emotions, their brain EEG pattern changed. It changed to something that showed slow bursts of higher voltage activity related to the emotionally intense subjective experience that they were having. So another question I get about this type of stimulating breathwork is, will it cause a panic attack? And in most cases, the answer is no, even in people who have experienced a panic attack in the past. And that's because if you start to feel breathless or feel like you can't catch your breath when you're doing circular breathing, it means that you need to relax the breathing more and not force it. And you can simply stop anytime you want because you know if it gets too overwhelming, you always want to stop before you start feeling breathless. Feeling breathless is not a usual experience with the type of breath work called circular breathing, uh, even in people who suffer physical symptoms of anxiety in daily life. I can tell you from personal experience with this practice of holotropic breath work, as well as the research evidence, that it can be an extremely powerful tool and it's one of my favorite mind-body practices, especially when it's done with a skilled facilitator to coach you through properly and to provide support if you need it. I was recently at Bali Spirit Festival and I was able to take part in an amazing breathwork workshop with our friend Christabel Zamor. She's the founder of Breath of Bliss and for anyone new to breathwork, I highly recommend checking out her retreats.